And finally, new rule, now that college grads are decorating their mortarboards with messages like, thanks, mom and dad, and proud of my BS, <laughs> <laughs> parents of graduates must also wear mortarboards so they can send messages back to their kids. Like, your old room is now an Airbnb. <laughs> Empty nesters have the best sex. <laughs> and hope you like ramen. <laughs> well, it's graduation time, and with that comes the ritual of commencement addresses, when America's overrated gas bags and wisdom-free celebrities are invited by star-fucking universities to <laughs> come to their school and tell a bunch of spoiled, stoned, debt-laden brats things like, your only limit is your own imagination, and the world will be a better place for having you in it. <laughs> but I say, why not level with the kids for once? Kids, you're not the future. You can't be anything you want to be. And the only way you can follow your dreams wherever they take you is if your dreams involve the grease trap at Chipotle. <laughs> Your parents just spent a quarter million dollars to send you to drinking camp. <laughs> and the average student who takes loans now owes 37 grand in debt. Jeez, if you'd spent that on a minivan, at least you'd have somewhere to sleep. <laughs> but cheer up, kids, because if you think it's bad now, take solace in the thought that in 25 years, it's gonna be so much worse. <laughs> Can you imagine what a commencement address will look like in 2041? <laughs> Graduates, uh, oh, my castle, yeah. Graduates of the class of 2041, parents, faculty, distinguished guests, masculine identifiers, <laughs> feminine identifiers, and cyborgs. Let me first say what an honor it is to be here today at the University of California, Goldman Sachs. And to join you in celebrating such an exciting time to be alive, 2041! <laughs> this could be the year that Flint, Michigan's tap water becomes drinkable again. <laughs> now, of course, it's easy to get nostalgic for how things used to be under the first President Kardashian. <laughs> Back before Canada built a wall to keep us out. And back when a person starting out in life could still get a studio apartment in San Francisco for only $2 million. <laughs> a month. <laughs> well, now that same apartment is unaffordable for all but the top executives at Exxon, Google, and Huffington Porn. <laughs> so yes, we have problems. The leading cause of death in our country is going outside. Driverless cars still won't pick up black people. <laughs> and 90% of America's wealth is owned by Katy Perry. <laughs> but as former President Kanye West once tweeted, <laughs> yo, sometimes stuff just be like that and you got to deal. <laughs> so true. So true. Look, I'd love to tell you kids that the world is your oyster, but the oysters are all dead. <laughs> Along with almost all species. But when that happened, did we give up and just start eating jellyfish? Well, yes, of course we did. <laughs> what else could we do? I mean, we can't all afford plankton. <laughs> My point is, we are resilient. I believe it was former Miami Dolphins coach Don Shula who said, success is not forever and failure is not fatal. 
Miami was a city that once existed in Florida. <laughs> and when it sank, did we panic? No, we didn't panic because we don't panic. Did we panic during the Zika epidemic of 2018? No. And many of the pinheaded babies born that year have gone on to become fine Republican congressmen. <laughs> Did we panic when Jesus returned to Earth, took one look at us and said, fuck you, and left? <laughs> no! We rallied around President Gaga and <laughs> took solace in the words of Chief, Chief Justice McConaughey, all right, all right, all right. Hats in the air, everybody! <laughs>